Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. And in this video lecture, we want to talk about the eukaryotic DNA replication termination. Okay, so we have talked about the DNA replication in eukaryote initiation, eukaryotic DNA replication elongation. Now it's time to talk about the termination process. So I already told you about the closing of the polymerization process, okay? Because I told you that there are multiple replication bubbles in eukaryotic DNA, and what happens actually there are two processes that uh, the DNA polymerase take to end the process of uh, polymerization. One is the RNAsH mediated method that is done in the leading DNA strand. Another one is the flap extension method, which is carried out by the FUN1 or FEN1 protein, which is done in the lagging strand of the DNA where the fin uh, actually terminates the process of uh, Paul Delta and the leading strand RNSH completes the process of polymerase epsilon. Now I told you about the closure of the process and how exactly it's done it's clear if you don't know about that please go back to that video that is the eukaryotic transcription elongation video and you can watch it. Now in this video we want to talk about the concept of termination in a whole new definition. So the very first thing that I want to talk about the termination in eukaryotic uh, DNA replication is again the termination site. Okay, and the termination site uh, for eukaryotes they have a specific consensus sequence, and this sequence mostly made up with like T T G G G this kind of okay, or T T T G G G G something like this. Okay, so if you look at this sequence for eukaryotes, if you look at uh, this sequence for human, if you look at the sequence for Arabidopsis. Uh, and maize in different organisms, you will find out extraordinary similarity between this consensus sequence that is found in all the organisms. This particular sequence, which is mostly GC rich region, okay, mostly what is it? GC rich region act as a termination site, okay. This is the termination site, and in this termination site, the process ends. Site means you know, particularly these regions are the signal where the DNA replication should end, but. In case of eukaryotic DNA replication, there is no proper way like in case of prokaryotes what we know that the uh, two replication fork move in the opposite direction, they meet at a point and then they stop the process. Not like that. In, in case of eukaryotic DNA replication, they are moving because there are multiple replication bubbles moving in their own uh, towards each other and they meet and complete the process. But here what is very very important is uh, two different things. One is the end replication end replication we call it end replication problem we need to talk about this end replication problem here and the second thing is the protection protection of the dna telomere this is another very important which is dependent on the first one that is end replication problem so what do we mean by the end replication problem in case of eukaryotic dna replication termination now i'll give you a very basic idea here let's assume let's say this is one strand and this is both are parental strands, okay? And let me take this is five prime, three prime. This is five, five prime, three prime. Complementary strands, and the new DNA is being synthesized, okay? So let's assume the new DNA will be synthesized here. This is uh, the leading strand we're talking about. This is the primer, and the rest of the structure is the DNA which is there, okay? And in this case of lagging strand, there are multiple primers present, okay? Multiple primers present. So we have a primer here, 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 here. Let's see it like this. And they are extended by the polymerase like that. So this is lagging strand, this is leading strand. Okay. Try to understand this concept very, very carefully. So now what happens is that we know that the end of the process of DNA replication in eukaryotes, okay, uh, this primer need to be clipped out. And this primer is clipped out by the RNA's age in the leading strand. So simply it clips it out. So now let's look at here what exactly works. For the leading strand, it is RNA's age that can clip the primer out. But for lagging strand, you can clip this primer out quite easy. You can clip it out, you can clip it out. If we clip these regions out, what are the sequence we are going to see? We are always going to see here this is 5 prime, this is 3 prime, this is 5 prime, 5 prime, 3 prime, right? Like that. So what we have here is that we have this 3 prime free, isn't it? In all these cases, the 3 prime hydroxyl is free. 
so it can be easily extended and fill the gap easily extended fill the gap hmm? until or unless this one the last primer which is present in the five prime side because if we clip this primer out then this side this is five prime end isn't it try to understand all these primers if we clip out three prime was free three prime hydroxyl was free and we know that the polymer is can extend the free three prime hydroxyl and we can fill the gap and then the ligase will seal nick for all these cases and the process is done but for one primer which was present in the five prime end of the lagging strand the primer that is present in the five prime end of the lagging strand this particular primer although it is cleaved out but it leaves a gap why we cannot fill the gap can anyone tell because it's free 3 prime there is no free 3 prime hydroxyl this is 5 prime 5 prime mean this is a phosphate in here we cannot extend phosphate we can only ex extend 3 prime hydroxyl by the dna polymerase enzyme so every single round the dna replication process take place the same thing may happen here as well the same idea this is 5 prime so we cannot extend it so the ends of the new strands that are synthesized both in leading and lagging strand they end up in a gap in the 5 prime end so this gap which is formed due to the degradation of the primer sequence in the 5 prime end of the leading and lagging strand cannot be filled because there is no 3 prime hydroxyl free to extend so that's why it creates a big problem that's why it creates a big problem this is known as the end replication problem so every single round the dna replication process take place the new strand gets shorter and shorter the new strand is getting shorter and shorter so the new dotted dna will be shorter the information will be lost from the terminal ends this is known as the end replication problem and the only way to fix it the only way we can fix it how we need to have a three prime hydroxyl somehow so how we can provide that if we extend imagine if we extend this template dna then we can add a primer here then we can have a free three prime hydroxyl here and then we can extend that three prime hydroxyl with deoxynucleotide sequences and you can ligate it with ligase then only we can do this stuff so that's why it's very important to extend the template DNA itself first and then use that extended template DNA to put a primer sequence to have a free 3 prime hydroxyl and then we can extend that 3 prime hydroxyl. This process is done by an enzyme known as telomerase enzyme. So the telomerase enzyme is a ribonucleoprotein. It carries a RNA template with a protein structure in it. That RNA template the telomerase will provide the RNA template and based on the RNA template sequence on the other template DNA strand can be extended. That process is done. So we are not doing anything to the newly synthesized strand. We are extending the template DNA. Then we are adding a primer in the newly synthesized strand and you can extend it and fill it. So we can add 100, 200 nucleotides at the end of the DNA, in both the 5 prime end of the DNA. So these all nucleotide sequences that are added in both the terminal sites, they are not useful for protein synthesis. They are junk anabolics, but they will prevent the DNA from degradation, prevent the chromosome from shortening. Okay. This is the idea of end replication problem. It is solved by the DNA uh, telomerase enzyme. And Apart from that, we also need to talk about the protection of the DNA telomere because the chromosome has telomere means the terminal side of the chromosomes are known as telomere. So to protect those terminal sites, one of the strands, which is the newly synthesized strand post product, that strands start to form a loop known as a T loop. We are going to tell you exactly how the T loop is formed. So, but at the end of this chromosomal terminal site, T loop is formed that prevents the terminal site of chromosome to be degraded. That's how the chromosomal terminal site is prevented from degradation. That is how the process is done. This is very important to understand in eukaryotic DNA replication termination. So I'm going to show you a 
picture in my computer screen to explain the T loop formation with the help of a protein complex known as shell terene. Okay, a protein complex known as shell terene. And how shell terene helps in forming T loop. And that T loop will prevent and protect the telomere of a eukaryotic chromosome. Okay, so let's see that. Okay, so now we are at our computer screen and I'm going to explain the end replication problem here. That means the role of RNA telomerase. I mean, the ribonucleoprotein telomerase, not RNA actually. It's a telomerase enzyme. So what telomerase enzyme can be capable of? So there are four different stages. One is binding, polymerization, translocation, and the finally uh, the completion of the process. So let's talk about uh, the solution to the end replication problem. As I mentioned you, this is the picture, okay? This is the picture of our DNA. This is the newly synthesizing DNA. And what we can clearly see here is that both uh, leading as well as lagging stand. If you look at both of them, we have the gap in the five prime end, right? I also showed the same thing here in um, the whiteboard, right? This is the gap because we cannot extend five prime end literally. So there is always a gap. So how to fill this gap? We need this telomerase enzyme which carries a RNA template. So this is the RNA template. And this is the protein element okay so rna and protein so it's called as a ribonucleoprotein so it synthesizes six nucleotide repeat and what this repeat says c c c a a c this is the repeat you know you can clearly see that c c c a a c is the template so obviously it's going to add the sequence g g g t t g this kind of sequence will be added so this sequence continue to be added g g g t t g this sequence will be added and they are going to slide you know once this uh, you know first six uh, first six nucleotide repeat is added so this is the binding part then the polymerization begins so as i told you that yes they are not going to add nucleotide sequence in the newly synthesizing dna they are going to add nucleotide sequence into their old parental dna strand so they are adding g g g t t g like that sequences okay polymerization continues and once uh, five six nucleotide is added then sliding to the five prime to three prime direction again addition of six more nucleotide same g g g t t g sequence okay so this polymerization process continues okay and they continue to add as many as they can and at the end you can see that you know earlier there is only the structure till this portion till this portion only but now we can clearly see that we are extending this five uh, this this three prime end actually we are extending this three prime end in this case also we are extending the three prime end of the existing dna but by doing so what we can do is that now we are going to add a new primer here five prime three prime hydroxyl will be, will be free here and then the nucleotide can be added and that way the newly synthesizing dna strand can get uh, the elongated DNA. So that's how we can fill this gap at this point. Okay, so this is the last point where the RNA primer can be added and that can be extended. So this portion was missing earlier, right? This portion was missing, but now that portion is filled by extending the three prime hydroxyl of the primer, which is added. So this is very, very important. The complementary strand is made by the primase, thus the DNA polymerase and the ligase can do the rest of the job. Okay, this is very, very important. So the job of the primase is not to extend the actual newly synthesizing DNA strand, but all the but the old parental DNA. Then we can add the primer uh, against that template and we can extend it. That's the idea behind the end replication problem. Apart from this problem, because this is solved, right? Without this problem, you know, normally, uh, without the presence of telomerase enzyme, uh, the ends can be shortened in eukaryotic uh, chromosome. And that happens and that causes aging, that, that causes problem related to aging. Because this telomerase enzyme is not found in all our somatic cell. It is found only in the stem cells. It's found in the stem cells. It's also found in some sort of cancer cells as well okay but they are not present in our normal somatic cells so that's why it is related to aging so to prevent that the telomeres are a little modified structure it form what is known as a t-loop remember i told you it formed a t-loop structure what do we mean by this t-loop structure formation here the idea is that as i said that the telomeres are special on uh, nucleoprotein telomerase enzymes you know they continue to add six nucleotide ttag all the sequences you know so ranging from 3 to 15 kilobases and several telomere associated proteins are added at this point. 
Now this double stranded telomeric DNA terminates at the three prime single stranded G rich overhang about 12 to 500 bases. This protruding three prime end can invade the duplex. So think about it. So this is the template strand. The blue color is the template strand. The new strand is uh, this is the red one is the new strand. Okay. So the new strand is uh, forming an overhang. The three prime end of the new single stranded DNA, which is GC rich, G rich region, it has an overhang of 12 to 500 base pair long overhang. Okay. And this long overhang can help to form a loop like structure, which is uh, known as a protective cap that shields the chromosome ends from being recognized and damaged by the DNA uh, nucleases or nucleolytic activities by any kind of exonucleases. Okay. So this is the idea. You can clearly see the red color is the newly synthesizing DNA and it carries a lot of G-rich sequence and it is invading uh, and it is forming a loop by having a complementary nature to the parental template DNA strand at some point and as a result of which a loop is started to form. And in this case, they also require so many different DNA associated protein, DNA telomere associated protein and those proteins are TRF1 which helps in telomere replication, TIN2 that stabilizes this protein complex known as the shelterine protein which is composed of TRF1 and TRF2. So TRF1 and TRF2 both together actually guides the movement of this uh, red colored DNA strand which is the newly synthesizing DNA strand 3 prime overhang that can be 15, uh, 12 to 500 base pair long overhang to form this loop structure by binding itself complementarily to the old parental DNA strand at midpoint somewhere. Okay, So that can be done. So sheltering is this TRF1 and TRF2 protein complex and that can be stabilized by TIN2 proteins and there are other things like TPP1 known as telomerase and POT1 recruitment proteins they recruit POT1 and all this protein together they help in invading this new 3 prime hydroxyl uh, carrying new strand to the old parental DNA and to bind with the old parental DNA by forming this T loop structures and once the T loop structure is formed then this portion this terminal portions are protected so this T loop is not only found in uh, only one end but let's say if you look at the chromosome as X structure T loop is present here 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 and here in all these four places the T loop structure is present and this T loop is actually protecting the end of our eukaryotic chromosomes that's how the eukaryotic chromosomes are prevented in the somatic cells they are protected so that the nucleus cannot destroy them but apart from that if the telomerase is activated it's always there in the stem cells and in some cancer cells but if we can activate the telomerase activity in regular somatic cells then somatic cells can also in uh, like exclude the process of aging okay so that's kind of it so hopefully you understood the process of the end replication problem as well as the reason of sheltering structure as well as the importance of T-loop formation. I believe you got this idea clearly. Okay. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to our channel to get more videos like that in future. And I'll recommend you to watch the complete series of DNA replication in eukaryotes, DNA transcription in eukaryotes and protein synthesis in eukaryotes or translation in eukaryotes in details in this channel. So stay tuned and do share the videos. Thank you. Bye.